Welcome to our third Awaken Your Relationships. For those of you who don't know me, I am Julie Murphy, and I wrote a book called Awaken Your Wealth, which I'm a money person. And what I've come to realize in my 25 years of doing this, that money is actually just the result of everything else going on in your life. And so I started this series. I have an Awaken Your Health on Monday nights. And then today uh, we do our Awaken Our Relationships. And in a few weeks, we're going to be doing Awakening Your Spirit and doing some energy work with some people that I've worked with. And Rita here today is going to help us with our Awaken Our Relationships. And would you like to tell everybody about yourself? Sure, absolutely. I help women who are in narcissistic and toxic relationships. I help them get their, uh, their minds and their bodies sorted out so that they can really kind of get rid of the things that keep them trapped in the relationship mm. inside themselves and their emotions or in their um, point of view, uh, all, the, all the tension and trauma that's inside. I help them put that down and then learn better communication skills and better negotiation skills um, and get the support that they always needed to kind of break out of that codependent pattern. So I help women, I coach them and I do body work with them as well to, to, to get them to the highest version of themselves, L literally, not just metaphorically like, oh, yes. it's the highest version of myself. No, literally, you start being innovative and creating new things in the world and making a mark. And one of the things that I have learned is that, you know, there's multiple parts of our being, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's the spiritual, there's the physical, emotional, and mental. And what I have found to become true is that, especially in times like this, that we can't really um, solve things necessarily on any other level, but on the vibrational level is like the deepest. So when you say like heal what's inside yourself, because inside yourself is the vibration that you are putting out to the world. So if you don't heal that, you will stay on this treadmill for the rest of your life mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you really need to do that. And I, and, and, and I think that's really hard, especially when you've been in relationships that, you know, and, and relationships that you're not showing up in the most authentic version of yourself, that mm -hmm. you've negotiated yourself away and that um, you are at this place where it's like, okay, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of ready to do this. And and Rita, you have taught me this, that, you know, it's not always the people you think that are the ones that are having these challenges. You know, one of the shocking things when I first met you that you said to me was like, most of my women who have the narcissistic and um, other mental disorder relationships, they're the ones, they're really successful professional women who on the surface to the rest of the world look like they have their act together. Why do, why do you think that is? Well, it's, it, it, we tend to think of women who are in toxic relationships as somehow broken. Mm. And because we think we're broken, we think there's nothing we can do about it and that this is what we deserve. Right. But it's really based on a pattern of stress coping. When we were children, um, it was important for us to adapt ourselves to our caretakers in order to stay safe. And wow. so especially, you know, doing the whole mother bond and being in the womb and all of that, there was a natural entrainment and attunement to another person and um, being tied into their tied into their nervous system. And so we were brought up with this belief that, we had to control the things around us in order to control how we felt that it was the fault of something outside of us that made us feel a certain way. Well, that's so interesting that you say that because when I think of, I, I remember when I was giving birth to my kids, um, they, one of the OBs had said, Oh yeah. And they have a 33% C-section rate. They said, oh yeah, it's all my professional women are the ones who get cut open and we have to pull the baby out because they're trying to control every ounce of the birthing process. And the one thing you have to do is actually let go of control and surrender. And I started to witness, you know, 
friends of mine that had C-sections and friends of mine that didn't. And I had two and two. I had a mixed bag. Um, I was certainly in that control group. And, and I actually, childbirth actually taught me to learn to let go of that control. Um, but I know exactly what you're talking about, you know, that with the stress and control mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we get trapped in these dysfunctional, toxic, physically destructive because of the stress relationships, because we think the only way to feel better is to control something outside of ourselves. But when we, when the science is starting to catch up with shamanic work and indigenous healing work, that's been around, you know, since the beginning of time. Long time, yeah. And it's, it's the reality is um, when we have experiences that we didn't have a chance to process through, when we have hard experiences that we didn't process through, it leaves, um, it leaves bookmarks yeah. in our brain and bookmarks in our body. And what happens is our, our mind and our body will automatically go to that bookmark. You know, oh, we still need to figure this out. We still need to read this chapter again. Automatically, it's a shortcut. The thing is, is when you take the time and you realize that when I have to take my bookmarks out of my system, so I stop triggering. And when that happens, you feel better. It's not by controlling somebody else and keeping them from triggering you. It's about getting rid of your triggers. Yeah. And when right. you get rid of your triggers, suddenly all that information that you've been absorbing over the years about, you know, higher self or spiritual improvement or psychology or personal growth, all the stuff we obsess about. Right. Um, now we remember when we're in times of crisis. Right. So successful women are the ones who have enough coping skills to power through whatever trauma they had as kids to still survive and keep their head above water. And they're the only ones who can tolerate the dysfunction of someone who is still deep in their mental health problems. Mm. So the strongest ones are the only ones that have the capability of maintaining a relationship with people who um, are hurting and wounded and traumatized in such a way that they keep sabotaging themselves uh, over and over and over and over and over. Well, and, and I think so many people, you know, I had a client, you, you taught me, um, havening, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. we talked about in our first episode. And, um, I have actually been now teaching that to my clients. And I had this client say to me yesterday, like, okay, so, so do I do this? Do I have to do it 20 times or do I only do it? You know? And what's amazing to me is that there's these really smart, brilliant women that have run businesses, multi, multi-million dollar businesses that they've built from scratch. And here they put up with all this toxic relationship stuff because they can cope and they can do it. And it's as simple of a solution to <laughs> take away your triggers. Now I'm just telling you, just rub your arms. Right, just rub your arms. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Do I have to do it 20 times? Just do it 20 times. Quit. It's by the time we answer the question, the 20 times would have been over. Just no. do it. They just look at me and they're like, yeah, right. What? Try giving you the pointing one sometime. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it, but, but there's that tool. Remember that? Yeah, the that triggers? I, yeah. No, 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 no. This one is where, um, Oh, where you turn around in a circle where you turn around in a circle and you look at yourself and you're like, really? You want me to turn around in a circle three and a half times, counterclockwise, pointing at something in my imagination. That's what you want me to do. And I'm like, yes. Well, you it. know why so many people have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in other ways of doing it. And the things that you have taught me <laughs> don't cost a dime. <laughs> right. Right. I and mean, you can it do it in a shower while yeah. for the session. That was it. And yeah. now I like I use it all the time. All yeah. of those all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I use it. I use it when I'm stressed out in the shower, if I'm going to the bathroom, if I'm walking to the mailbox. Yeah. You know, whatever. Well, and it's funny, I've even and I know you coach women, but I've even um because what I find is that I tend to draw men to me, even as clients that are very heart based. And um, they even look at me, you know, big old muscles and everything. And, you know, they're six foot two. And I'm like, okay, rub your arms. And right. like, they look at you even more goofy than the women do. 
Like, and, just do it. When, and then when it works, it's like, what do you mean? I don't have to plow my way through to a solution. Right. I don't have to like right. wrestle myself to like get yeah. myself to this next place. And, yeah. and I just keep going to the fact that we make this way harder way harder but we lost way the harder. wisdom what happened is we lost yeah. the wisdom along the way we used to have these tools i mean these tools it's literally have been around in cultures for tens of thousands of years but so highly guarded and mm -hmm. secretive and politicized right. and emotionalized and yep. you know that they didn't get passed down and because they right. didn't get passed down we've got uh, generations of trauma Yep. now that are building one upon the other and we have to start reintroducing these tools and creating safe spaces for people to to put the stuff down well and i've even used it with my kids when i find my kids trigger mm -hmm. and i'm like okay yeah it wasn't perfect the first 11 years of your life but we're gonna work on it now so you know and and to me wow i've spent 47 years of my life and like for them to get a tool that, you know, cause like, I know I've come in to really change ancestral patterns and there have been, um, it's interesting. I thought that it was only on one side of my family and there's something on the other side of the family too. And, and I'm going, my soul signed up to clear all of it for both lines. And I was like, Whoa. and I've always said, I have an incredible, incredible capacity to do things. And <laughs> This last phase of this stuff is kind of like, I've almost like landed on my keister because mm -hmm. it's like, holy bejesus. And, um, but I know it's changing. You know, the shamans believe that we have two tubes that um, make up us, energetic tubes, if you will. One is your ancestral DNA and the other one is your, um, your soul's path and your soul's body. And so a lot of times I'm, what I'm also often fascinated with is the fact that um, the work when you do things with a lot of these indigenous tribes actually address both of those. And I know you've integrated that into your work. I've integrated it into my work. And they're really these pieces of gold that thank God all these indigenous tribes actually saved all this knowledge from generation to generation. And, and I can tell the tides are turning. A good friend of mine is from the Hopi Indian tribe. And uh, she lives in Los Angeles. She doesn't live on the reservation or anything. And she just posted the other day that the, um, the Cheyenne Indians uh, actually won against the pipeline being put through in their, you know, and I was like, wow, that's a big change. That's a big change. It's like the Native Americans are being honored and respected and, mm -hmm. and the courts gave that to them. And I thought that was just absolutely beautiful. Can you and, ever imagine the Confederate flags gone from the South? Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. Very big deal. And so we always thought it would just be status quo. I know. I know. And that's why, even though so many of us have asked for all of this infrastructure change that's happening today and the infrastructure change is coming and it's like a fire hose. But what we don't understand is that if we work on ourselves, all the rest will fall into place. So you don't necessarily have to take on everything. Like yesterday, I had a day where all my triggers were triggered. I, I, I was triggered galore. I was rubbing my arms. I was doing every little tool. Yeah, that I yeah, yeah. You look like and a nut like, and you're crying all over the place and you're oh, yeah, somebody asked snotting. Me I and... on my Facebook live, I'm like, no, nah, I wasn't crying. I'm like, but oh. Like yeah. it just all was, and I know it's everything that comes up is leaving. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing I've, I've done enough of this work that I know. And I trust that that happens that it's also okay. Like with the pandemic and the, the numbers rising, you know, in certain States and it's bringing up a lot of those trauma points of what we had buried in our subconscious mind. And, and know that it's okay if you need to like stay home and check out and disappoint people in your life and not do what they expected you to do. Because when you do you, everything else falls into alignment. Because this is a big transformation transit time right now. Between now and I think it's like spring of 2022 is where the astrological charts. And I even find it interesting that the economic analysts are now saying the same dates. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's weird. When does astrology and finance go together?
<laughs> oh yeah, all the time, you know, and, but the cultures have been saying it as well. All of the indigenous cultures, the Mayan calendar and, you know, the different Eastern European ancestral cultures, they, I mean, they've been saying that we're in this 5,000 year cycle and that this is a, a real transit time mm -hmm. where uh, we as a, as a world population, you know, we have the choice right. of which direction we want to go. It almost feels, you know, and I am, I was raised Catholic, which means that for me, um, I'm, I, I had to like, e even any, even someone saying Jesus helped me caught this, you know, catch this fish on a fishing show would trigger me you know, because of, of my experience of with, history, yeah. yeah, from my history. And so I'm, I'm one of the least people that'll be, that will Bible thump or anything. And I'm like, this feels like Armageddon, not, maybe not, maybe not like on a whole pestilent, but yeah, little, little bit where people have to choose the path they want to take for themselves moving forward, very consciously and with intention. We, they had they're being put in a position to choose who they want to be and um and so i'm like let's go on the side of good and peace and people getting along and whatever package you find that in mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. i think that's the other component is that you know if we stay in the containers that we've always known we're always going to get the results and stay in the same suffering cycles that we've always had. And there's so often all these distractions that we use. I think that is one of the things that quarantine has brought up for people is that, you know, which is why you said domestic violence is up 60%. And it's like, well, it's because we're not distracting ourselves with being busy, drinking out at the bars, entertaining and eating out in restaurants. Like it doesn't all have to be destructive distractions, but they're distractions working way too much, you know, and, and when you get planted at home and all of a sudden you're like, okay, they're all gone. I kind of got to look at what's going on in my backyard, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and a lot of people sat there with things going, these are not in alignment with me. I know more divorces that have been filed because, you know, either it was right before quarantine or during, you know, like, and they're just like, I can't do this anymore. Like mm -hmm. everybody's just hit this tilt button. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I come from a family where there is not a lot of divorce and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of, um, you just chalked it up and you put up with it and you yes. just moved on. And yeah. I, I just literally, I remember my dad saying to me, he wasn't that bad of a guy, Jewel, is he? And I was like, dad, I've moved on. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter because I chose and I can't say so. So I've realized like who I can have conversations with, who I can't have conversations with. And that's okay. I still love them all, you know? And but so we're, we're changing, the, we're having to change the conversation. So having a, a, around, um, around happiness. So I, when I was watching Hannah Gatsby and, and her show, Nanette, I think it was Gatsby. She's an Australian um, lesbian woman who was a comedian. And she was talking about Pablo Picasso because she had a major in art history and Pablo Picasso, you know, would talk about how you know, he would, he had a, a young woman that he was having an intimate relationship with who was, you know, underage and 17. And the reason that it was perfectly okay was because she was in her prime and he was in her, in, in his prime. So it was a perfect match. And the point that she made was, so it was assumed that a 17 year old girl was in her prime and that was the best she ever had to achieve. And that her ability to help someone like Pablo Picasso achieve greatness, his greatness would always be more than the greatness of her potential. And so it would, it's, it's okay to, for women to take on the burden because we will never be as great as the men. And so it's our responsibility to, um, to raise them up in some way 
and and support their identity and support their um, their life choices and our happiness that what what makes us great as equal human beings is we were taught never to consider because it's a whole whole dysfunctional paradigm of how we see men and women right well it's very funny as as you were talking one of the things that came to mind uh in 2005 was the first time that i was exposed to um seeing a medium who um she one of my girlfriends lived in sedona and she was like jewel she because i kept seeing signs for psychics in sedona and i'd never been there before and i was like hey have you ever seen one of these people and she goes oh yeah but if you want to go to one you have to go to the real deal and she handed her she dialed her phone that was back when there were flip phones <laughs> she she handed she dialed this person's phone number handed the phone over and she says and the woman answers she goes hi julie i've been waiting for your call your seminar is going to be over so you can come Tuesday at 11, right? I was calling from Stephanie's phone. And this is what the woman said. I go, okay, now I got to go. Like she just nailed everything. Cause I was there for a seminar for Deepak Chopra and it was done. And Tuesday I was open at 11. She was told to hold that space for me. The minute I walk in the door, she says to me, yes, you were born your father's daughter to teach him that women can do things and be more than barefoot and pregnant in this world. And I would say that statement all the time. You know, my, I, I, I'm, I, my dad and I have a very, very close relationship. We're like, I'm, I'm just the female version of him. And he's so per, he's been so perplexed over the years as to like, but I have this really deep connection, but she's a woman. Like, like he couldn't, his wiring couldn't even like figure that out. And it's just because of generations of that wiring. And it's been really fun to watch how that's untangled through the years. Like he couldn't understand why I worked and I had a husband that was an at-home dad and he couldn't understand why when I had kids, I didn't sell the company. Like all these things that, you know, it's been really interesting to watch exactly what you're talking about in my own personal life. But we have to understand that that is also the basis of how we choose our relationships. Right. And all that wiring. Mm -hmm. Right. I, it's kind of that bookmark again, too. You know, if it's your if your family lineage has things that they that aren't in alignment with what the truth is, you know, the belief right. is we're in danger, protect ourselves at all costs, fight everybody, whatever the whatever the belief was. The truth is, no, when you collaborate with people and you put your defenses down, then yeah. you're able to create things greater than yourself. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a bookmark. It's a lie that we, they, we keep trying to figure out until we figure it out and find the truth. Well, and that's where I go back to, you know, I always talk about the fact that we have to build our lives from the inside out. And to your point, we have to go inside of ourselves to heal ourselves, to get the outside where we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And, and I am constantly, you know, I'll have women who really come after me about the fact that I'm like on you're part of the problem because you don't love yourself enough to walk into that boss's office or walk into that relationship and speak your voice. And I know it's not easy because I've had to learn to do that, but that is really where it starts. So it's about getting the tools and the support and what you need to get that voice going. And, you know, it's, it's been amazing to me to watch in business, how men always get the raises and the bonuses that they want always. And it's because they ask for it and they walk in believing they deserve it. Even mm -hmm. if they don't. Mm -hmm. It's these and beliefs that, that they end up feeling like traumas in the body because a lot of times they are, you know, every time we're minimized, every time we're put down, every time we're yeah. told to support the men. Um, those are many traumas of denying ourselves, denying who we are really inside of ourselves and our potential. Mm -hmm. And so every time we, we deny, it leaves that wound, that, that suppressed emotion, like, oh, yes, it is true. I'm not good enough. Oh, yes, it is true. I'm not good enough. Yeah. And every time we embrace that belief, it became a physical marker in our body waiting for us to process through it, waiting for us to come back and visit it and say, oh, I'm listening to you. What do you have to say? Right. I know I couldn't be there for you then and nobody could, 
Um, but I'm here now, so let's let's finish it. And when you do that, it takes the it takes the marker off your body, and then you've got no problems walking into the boss's office and believing you deserve whatever you deserve, because right. you're not fighting yourself. You're not getting hijacked by your own emotions. You're not you're you're not trying to climb up the mountain with one leg and two arms behind your back with no shoes, you know, right. which is what it's like when you have all those layers of reaction inside yourself or beliefs or patterns of, of, of response to stress. You clean those things off. It's no problem. You right. don't, you're not, you're not walking through a wall. You're, you're just walking in and saying, Hey, you know what, this is what, this is where I'm at. What can you do? For, you know, I'd like to help us grow. And so you have a strategy and a plan and it works out great. Yep. Totally. We have one of uh, my friend, Debbie, who's also a business owner is asking to share with our guests, a website or YouTube channel, if there is one. So can you share your uh, website and how people can get a hold of you? Oh, sure. Um, the best way to find me is inspiremassage.com. And um, you can find all of my narcissist information on there. And then once you sign up for my email list, uh, then you're able to start getting passwords and things to the libraries of live streams that I do. You start getting all the links and resources for how to find me on Facebook or, or uh, YouTube. I do live streams five days a week and um, on, in a multiple, multiple spaces. And, and it's a great way to start the day. And then I work with women one-on-one -on -one and with big coaching groups and, um, but the best, all that's on inspiremassage.com. And, and for me, and I'm put, I'm typing it in as, um, as we speak, um, juliemurphy.com. I have a whole toolbox that once you, um, just sign up for a free membership, you just sign up and you get in there, then you have access to all of my resources that are just like Rita. So Rita helps people in relationships. I have other people that help in the health sector the spirit, your spirit and soul work. Um, and obviously I help on the money side, you know, but to me, um, there's so many aspects of our lives. And through 25 years of doing this, I always, I always talk about how the fact that I have three layers of what I call strategic partnerships. There's the normal, which every financial planner has, which is are you like your CPAs and your attorneys and things of that nature. Um, the second, I call them the, the tweeners. They're more like nutritionists and uh, therapists um, and mortgage brokers, things of that nature. And then I have what I call the esoteric and the esoteric ones are actually the ones that really get to the core of the real issues. They're not helping with the external things. They're helping more with the real core stuff. And, um, Rita, you've certainly played that role, not only in my own life, but many others lives and in helping so that we can build our wealth from the inside out. You know, that's why that's the title of my first book, the emotion behind money building wealth from the inside out, because that's really what it boils down to, because the whole concept of how do we actually embody living what I call real wealth, and that's in my second book called Awaken Your Wealth, and it's because most of us are not living the life that's truly making us happy, because we haven't found the courage or gotten out of our trauma cycles to get there. And that's why it was so important for you and I to actually address these trauma cycles because this is all stuck in our subconscious brain. And, and our, I want everybody to have access. I'm like going, this is so easy to heal. Right. We can do this. Everybody. So, okay. Do you want to, do you want to do a demo for people? Yes, do you please. Do a demo? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is start talking to me about something that makes you feel a little tense or agitated to talk about. You want me to name something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we'll take you through the process so people can see how the doors open up and how easy it is and the insights you get. You're like going to go deep me. on me, aren't you? Oh, you get okay. to pick whatever you want. This no, I'm going to go deep because you know what? One of the gifts that I think I've been given as a, I'm, I'm an open book. I, I, I don't, because the more I share my story, the more than people can share theirs. So a couple of weeks ago, I was served with legal papers and you're, you're aware of this, um, uh, for child abuse, child endangerment and, um, contempt of court. And clearly you can see it still triggers me. Just those words, just child abuse. Because if anybody knows yeah. me. 
See, this is my trigger. So if anybody knows me, you know I am not that mom. And to see those in a legal document is like off the charts. So here's my trigger. I'm being raw and real. Okay. So let's show them how it's done. <laughs> All right. We're going to do the travel points. This is a big one. So thumb, forefinger. This comes from um, Tapas Fleming. And then your middle fingers kind of go in the middle of your forehead. Yep. And then the other hand goes on the back of your head. So we'll make it easy for everybody. We're just going to, um, what can we do to kill time? What we can, can we do to kill? We can, we can uh, <laughs> sing a song. While I'm holding my trigger points? Yes, while you're holding your trigger points, we can do something to kill time. Um, well, I can tell. So you've done this with me multiple times. Mm -hmm. So um, I literally, as I was starting to put my fingers up on my forehead, it, my body instantly, instantly started to calm. And it, I only had one finger. I was going like this. And then it just started to calm down. And you can even tell in my voice, I'm even calmer. Like to me, this is almost like magic. Mm -hmm. It is like magic. It's talking in the trigger. nervous system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hold this just a little bit longer. So when you hold trauma points or do any of the tools that we do, you don't have to be in a certain mindset. You don't have to, in fact, the more agitated you are, sometimes the better. And sometimes yeah. as a healer, my job is to poke a little bit to, to get you a little bit more agitated. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it great? People, yeah, pe people, people work with me so that, I can, poking the bear. so that I can poke the bear. Um, and as I said, these points that we're doing right here come from Tapas Fleming. They're TAT points and they're acupressure points that have actually been around for thousands of years. And what it does is it takes your brain out of your fight or flight sympathetic nervous system and it flips it back into your rational mind parasympathetic nervous system where you can think clearly and you don't feel agitated. Yep. So, so you don't have to meditate or be Zen. You can talk about anything you want while holding the points and it disables the trigger in your brain that causes you to trigger in the first place. So we're right now with you, Julie, we're healing you. Your body is healing right. itself. It's, it's ungluing the, the cement around the trauma trigger that makes you cry and be upset around all of this. Right. And it's allowing that trigger to be reabsorbed into the body so that in the future times you deal with this or when you have to deal with it in court or when you have to talk to your husband about it or 2 a.m. when you're completely can we, freaking out. Can we say ex-husband? Ex-husband, absolutely. <laughs> if somebody said husband, I'm like, oh, I like that. He's a husband. <laughs> yes, you're, you're absolutely. So when you have to talk to your ex-husband, when you have to talk to, uh, about, you know, a, to, the, to a judge or the courts or your attorney or his attorney, or you have, the trigger is easier or completely gone. Well, and I'd like to say that um, so you can my, relax. My then, brain, yeah, I'd mm -hmm. like to explain to people what happens to me in that process. Yeah. So my brain, so I go to this place because when I read those words on a legal document, and this is because I took my children to Sedona. And so uh, he wasn't comfortable with that with the COVID. And, um, and so, regardless, people can have different opinions. But throwing child abuse at somebody for that, that's like off the edge. And um, I have watched myself and witnessed myself since I received those papers. There would be days where my nervous system, I could feel it just shaking like underneath the surface, just shaking. And I would do like one of these tools that you've taught me to move the trauma out of my system. And it's been amazing to see how instantaneously that when things come up, then they can go out and, and then they just, then they just leave. Like my whole nervous system is calm as all get up right now. And normally, and I, what would that be like after you were triggered? What would it be like normally? Oh, it just keeps ramping. Right. So you, what happened, if I wouldn't have interrupted that cycle, um, then my brain would have hijacked it because I have a really strong mind and um, then everything else in my day doesn't seem as good. Like my, my brain would go to other pieces that weren't working out. 
And I've learned really well to interrupt those trigger points um, so that it, it doesn't last me a day. But I think like when I first opened up my company and I now think back, gosh, that was 20 years ago, that I would have this hyper reactive nervous system and things that normally wouldn't throw people off would throw me off. And, but it was just because of the trauma I had in my childhood from being sexually molested from a Catholic priest in my parents' home. That's actually the core wound that actually is really healing. Wow. And I didn't know the parents' home part. Holy yeah, cow. It happened that's... In the corner of my, he was a family friend and his name is Father Mayday. He's up in house arrest. He spent 20 years in jail. Um, he's in house arrest in his eighties now up in West Racine, Wisconsin. And he, um, that is the trauma that I, on an emotional level, that when I go through something, why I have this hyper reactivity, it's because I finally, as I was healing from things after my marriage ended, that this all came out in a hypnotherapy session I was doing, that that was actually why I had the behavioral patterns that I did in relationships. And, and that's been healing ever since. And, and I know a lot of people have a lot of different stories. You know, it's been really interesting to me that as I've healed that within myself, and I will even say that I'm still healing, obviously, because I'm, I'm triggered, but I can move through those triggers really fast now. And then they don't affect my day. And what's been super interesting to me about all of that is that my business continues to expand and grow. My work in the role continues to expand and grow. And I'm healing ancestral patterns in my family. And I'm watching the healing happen in these quantum levels and how things like that rippled effect to other people in my family. And it's been beautiful to watch all this healing happening. And it took me to have the courage to crack it open in the first place. And so everybody, I think, has their own version or story of that. And I can't believe it was as simple as learning some of these points to how to not trigger anymore. It's and, you know how angry <laughs> that makes me at times, you know, of like, speed, there's so much unnecessary suffering. So I, I want to like intervene with everybody anymore. You know, I, I'm sure it's like the Long Island psychic medium who sees stuff. She wants to talk to everybody. You know, <laughs> I want to be like, no, stop suffering. It can stop now. Oh, how true is that statement? Uh, it's it's oh. silly, but it's what's been missed. It's because we didn't, the body tends to be more feminine. It's receptive, yeah. it's, it's organic, it's mother earth, it's healing. And our culture has minimized and diminished the physical and focused more on uh, accomplishments and on, on, on out there, which is why we try to control things out there in order right. to feel better. And we've right. missed and minimized and, and squashed the feminine energy, which is that, that body and that healing. And uh, because of that, the, the natural side effect is we lost the wisdom of how emotions show up in the body and how to heal them. I mean, for whatever reason, we're designed to be able to heal ourselves, but we didn't think it was important anymore to keep that information. And, yeah. uh, and then lineage, whole family systems kind of would fall in disrepair. Right. And it's, you know, to me, what's so interesting is that we just have to hold the space because, you know, what I learned about myself is that on a deep, deep level, I just want to be loved, you know, like that, that is what it is. So I even learned in some of the sessions that I've done is that because I figured out how to make money when I was a child really early, like if you talk to anyone who was in my grammar school, they would all be like, oh, Julie sold the most candy bars, the most taffy apples, the most sales kit. Everyone wanted to be in my homeroom because we always won the school prize because I always sold the most. Because I figured out that money got me out of where I grew up and where I grew up was fine, but it was my way to another path. And, um, and I've learned that like in relationships, I always chose men who never had money per se in the past because I figured 
if they used money almost as their priority in their life, like I did, then I wouldn't actually get the love that I desire. And it's funny how these psychological belief systems and patterns, and as I unpacked that in all the work that I did going, if you hear about, if you hear that from the outside, you sit there and go, well, that's kind of goofy. Why would you do that? Like none of it was conscious. Not one ounce of it was I aware of until the last like six months, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, that it got to that core and deep. And so the so question I have is, um, what are your thoughts around the documents and the child abuse and uh, those statements now after we've done this intervention? I mean, they don't, they don't trigger me. Um, like, I just, yeah, that's a really good point. Like you say that to me, doesn't trigger me. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. insight I mean, around it? To me, I, I, I see why um, it all occurred. Uh, I don't agree with it. But, and it'll go its process and a judge will, you know, make his decision. And, and I know that none of it's true because I'm a really great mom. And, um, and it'll just be another one of those things that's part of my history, you know, and, and just walk through the steps, but don't give it any energy. Like that's the key is not to give it any energy because when you give it energy and you react, cause you can't get yourself out of the reactive then what happens is you then create more of that because we are the creators of our lives and we don't want to keep recreating the same traumas with different faces and different names over and over and over again. Because mm -hmm. so we're just trying to figure it out. That's why we do it because we're just trying to figure it out and yeah. we're trying to heal that trauma. We keep going after those relationships because we're trying to heal the trauma and it's mm -hmm. our judgmentalism about it all that keeps us trapped because we think there's nothing we can do. We stay in that helpless. We have right. to keep looking and growing and healing until we become the person that is no longer victimized. Right. Totally get it. And that goes back to what we were saying earlier in terms of, you know, asking for the raise, asking for what you want in relationship. And I remember the first time one of my coaches said to me going, well, tell the guy that you're, because after, you know, getting divorced in your forties is actually a little fun because you start over again and you know, a lot more 20 years later. And they're like, well, tell the guy what you want when you're having sex with him. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm going, uh, I didn't, was not raised to tell him what I want, you know? And like, even the point, like, it's funny how it's so true on so many levels for, especially as women, like, yeah, you, you need to because you deserve it, whether it's in the relationship or whether it's, you know, when you're having sex or when, when it, sex or money is all second chakra. That's the thing. And it's like, and that's our creativity point in our body, which is just below our belly button. For those of you who are not aware of that. And, and it's like, for all this to heal, you really have to speak your voice of what your desires are and your needs. Otherwise you're going to get packages that you don't really want. And, yeah. and I see women do that all the time where they complain about like their needs aren't getting met, but they're not asking for their needs. Right. Well, it's, it's a lot of times, once again, it's that trauma that gets in the way and we stay trapped in the idea of, I can't get my needs met. We, we, we feel helpless to the situation when in reality, we are now attractive women who have our lives together, who have a lot of power, who have a lot going for us. We're not that little girl anymore who has to depend upon other people and we've got some authority behind us and so many men want to support women but they don't know how and the way they try to figure out how ends up being a little more bullying or assertive or self-centered you know but it doesn't mean that they're bad people it just means right. that they haven't they've been raised in the same sort of polarizing dynamic as we have of the roles of men and women. And so men are craving women to step up and step in and say, let me tell you what I need in a way that you can hear me that doesn't trigger your trauma. Right. Yeah. You know, because they're getting their traumas triggered. So they're responding in the way that, that they are. 
and we have to learn how how they how their mind map works so we can communicate better. Communication and misunderstandings are the core of so many so many of these well, problems. And, and let's think about that from the other perspective, right? So men, and I used to even say this to my ex-husband all the time that men didn't have dads in the prior generation that communicated. So they too do not have a roadmap. <laughs> mm-hmm. They don't have a roadmap. Us females don't have a roadmap to be in an empowered state in the world and fully be your being. And the men don't have a roadmap of how to stand next to the queen and be her king. Yes. Like, and, and I don't care if this is in heterosexual or homosexual, couples, matter. Like yeah. whatever your sexual gender is, there's still one more masculine and one more feminine. Mm-hmm. And so I think what's so important here is that as we, as a humanity, hold a safe space because both sides are trying to figure it out. It doesn't make any one side good or bad. It just is. And we're learning and we're shifting it Mm -hmm. because I know tons of beautiful heart based men where they have these incredible hearts and they were definitely, they were told to shut that down by their dads and chalk it up. Don't cry. Don't do those things. And, you know, how do you like still as a man then stand in your power, but yet mm-hmm. you have this, this huge, enormous, incredible, beautiful heart, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it, and it's this dance. And if we just all recognize that we all have these trauma points, whether you're male or female, that when you do you and address your traumas and get out of your suffering cycles, then you open yourself up to the, all the desires that you've ever wanted in relationship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's super important. Mm-hmm. And you get to decide who you want to do relationship with. You know, I was lucky enough to have a, a mentor that really, really imprinted on me that relationships are there to challenge you so that you, um, you, you start breaking out of those shells. So they're meant to touch you at an intimate level. They're meant to stir up your wounds and your triggers because that's how we heal by being in relationship with other people and so when you know that going in to a new relationship that the purpose of the relationship is to help you bring up your most vulnerable points so that they can be loved and healed and you can become the greatest version of yourself that's possible when you walk into the relationship knowing that and knowing that you'll do the same for them that's going to be your role now you say huh, who do I want to do that with? Who do I want to have this dance with? It's not going to, you know, it's going to have some pain, but are they worth the risk? Should I invest in them? You know, and then once you invest, then you kind of put your stake in the ground and say, all right, we'll, we'll go a distance till this is done. But do some, be choosy, you know, to decide who, who you want to do your healing process with. Well, and I will tell you, and we've talked about this, that that, that is the relationship I'm in today. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful, the dance, you know, of um, being vulnerable, but yet um, holding safe space for the other to do their process. Because if you know one's heart and you hold safe space, you know, they're no matter what comes out or no matter what goes sideways, they're not, they're not a bad person, nor am I a bad person when my, when my stuff comes out. Right. And it's just about really, um, you said it, doing your work and doing, you know, and recognizing and, and you'll, you'll know if you have that person that holds space for you. And if they start to go down the path of old games, you're like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that because you're more aware now. Like you have said to me over and over again, Julie, you're not the same person. So it's not going to be, my fear was that it would be the same outcome, but it's never been the same outcome ever because I'm different. And it goes back to that. If you shift the inside, then the outside shifts. Mm -hmm. You know too much now. Now you know too much to ever go back to those old ways of thinking, the lies that you were raised with that were, you know, put into place to help keep you under control. I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, as you can tell. (laughs) And, And, you know, and, and they're doing that. Yeah, no one's aware they're doing that. It's it's it, it was just a, a shift in in priorities and a shift in values, and then we lost things, and mm-hmm. fear got the best of people, and 
and now and it compounded and it grew over time. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's a lot of what is shaking out today. You know, it's like, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's karma. Really it's inevitable. This was going to happen. Yeah. One of, uh, Jean on here says, oh my God, my ex-husband used to tell my son to stop crying and don't be a wuss. Jean, I will tell you, I literally had that conversation with my son yesterday because I keep telling him what I have learned in all of this is that I want my children to feel their feelings as we're finding our new space in a divorced family. And, and I just said, I go, feel your feelings. And then my son says to me, he goes, mom, I listened to you. I felt my feelings. And then when I was on the basketball court before school got out, my friends made fun of me. And I was like, okay, I get that too. And he goes, but yet I don't want to not, not feel my feelings because I know that creates anxiety over the time because he, his dad has told him not to feel his feelings. And um, so I go, well, you know, and, and Rita, you help me with this that in terms of, um, he can go somewhere else to then a place where it's appropriate to feel your feelings and to, to move through it. And because what I've learned on the physical body is that when you don't feel your emotions, it crystallizes. And I will say this over and over again, because people do not realize that this is what's keeping like weight on and why your body's breaking down is because those un processed emotions crystallize on a cellular level in your system. And then that creates stagnation, which creates physical illness over time. And I'm not the expert of that. Rita is, <laughs> but I know it. I've lived it. I've done it. I've actually released a ton of that crystallization. Mine was all stuck in my intestinal tract. And I did this amazing set of colonics um, over the last few months where I watched all that old crystallization leave my body and it was old and emotional stuff. And I felt a bunch of emotions. Like the only way out of all of this is to feel all the emotions that you have not felt through the years. And so even as I actually look at all, so much of what's going on post-divorce is Actually, I don't even know if the emotions that are coming up are actually directly related or not. Some of them probably are, some of them are probably not because, but what it is, it's a beautiful healing instrument for me. Beautiful. It's almost been handed to me on a silver platter, you know, and that is the greatest gift my ex-husband is giving me is that I am healing everything that is holding oh, me back yeah. from the being hardest the greatest version of who I am. Yep. The hardest, most difficult situations have the potential for the greatest healing, the fastest healing. Yeah. And so I've always been a bit of a risk taker. And so I go for situations and relationships, which are edgy, yeah. you know, which, uh, call, which challenge me, get me out of my comfort zone by choice. You know, people who have anger management issues. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want to get to know you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and because that to me, that's being alive when totally. I am in a constant space of challenging my mind and my heart and my body and healing things and rechanneling the energy. When I'm in that dynamic space, that's when I'm the most alive. And yep. so hard, hard relationships and situations um, can cut, uh, can, can cut patterns now like today, instead of seven generations from now. Totally. And we are here, like to your point, that this transformation is in a 5,000 year cycle. Mm -hmm. All the indigenous tribes know that. And we are breaking all these ancestral patterns in relationships mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's just about allow yourself the space to heal the trigger and trauma points so that you can move into the desired relationship that you want. Mm -hmm. And, um, I cannot believe how fast an hour goes talking to you, Rita. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a, it's a time vortex when people yeah. get around me. It's, it's fun. But it means that I spend a lot of time getting to know women at a beautiful, deep level. And can you tell everyone one more time? So we have some people saying, mm -hmm. how do I get a hold of Rita? Sure. Go to my website, inspiremassage.com. You'll see a, a, a wide variety of 
of options in the drop down menus to kind of look to see who I am, how I work, what's available. Sign up for my email list because that'll make sure that you get all the information you need to follow me. I do daily live streams on Facebook and YouTube. And um, I do classes and groups and one on one coaching. I work in person and virtually. And uh, you can just start exploring. I've been doing this for about 14 years now. Beautiful. And again, um, you can reach me at juliemurphy.com and I have a whole toolbox. It's a free membership. Just get on there for people like Rita to help you on your journey, whether it's your personal world, health, relationships, or your work life or your family life. And obviously I help you on the financial life piece, me and my team at JMC Wealth Management. So we are here to help and we hope to see you guys next Thursday again at uh, 9 a.m. Central for Awaken Your Relationships. Thank, Thank you, Rita. You, Julie. Thanks everybody for being here. Have a great Bye. rest of your day. Thank Bye. you. Well, bye-bye.